Rivers of blood. That's what the headline writers made of Enoch Powell's prediction of racial violence during a speech which divides opinions to this day. It'll be exactly 50 years next month since he delivered it in a Birmingham hotel. Well now, Wolverhampton Civic and Historical Society is considering an application for a blue plaque to mark his time as a local MP. Joanne Gallagher assesses the legacy of Enoch Powell after half a century. News footage from a bygone era, but Enoch Powell's notorious speech still resonates 50 years on. In this country, in 15 or 20 years' time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. The notorious speech was delivered at this Birmingham hotel. In 2010, Paul Upple was elected as the Conservative MP in the Wolverhampton seat once held by Powell. What do you think Enoch Powell would have made of the fact that you were an MP in his seat? Being the child of East African Sikh migrants coming to the UK, and then being the MP for Wolverhampton Southwest, I think it has a certain irony, and I think maybe Enoch Powell would have appreciated that. What do you think is the legacy of Enoch Powell's speech, or indeed, is there a legacy? Look, the legacy was that it put race relations and immigration very firmly on the map. I don't think Enoch Powell envisaged the consequences of that, and I think he underestimated the ability of human beings come together. And the legacy of the speech is actually that communities live together as one. A campaign is underway to erect a blue plaque to Powell in Wolverhampton, where he was an MP for almost a quarter of a century. The idea makes people like Milkinder Jaspal shudder. His parents moved to Wolverhampton from the Punjab in the 1960s. He says Powell's speech changed their lives. Go back to my mother, I mean, you know, it did frighten the life out of her. Uh, she never changed her um, uh, nationality. Uh, you know, she came with the Indian passport and she died with an Indian passport. She used to remind us, you know, don't regard this as your home. The, you know, you, you can never be safe here. You'll be thrown out one day if the, they turn against you. Now a Labour councillor in the city, he opposes a plaque honouring Powell. I don't think uh, he warrants that. I don't think he contributed uh, uh, in a positive manner. And just because he was an MP doesn't mean we've got 650 MPs. They all do good work, but do they all warrant blue plaques? You know, some of them may do, who've contributed to their communities, to their constituencies. And I can't actually recall what he did for the constituency. But there is support for the proposal. One of our region's UKIP MEPs is an admirer of Powell and says he deserves recognition in the city he served. The words that were used in the one speech were wrong and out, totally out of order. No one should ever use those kind of words. However, this is a man who's thinking on economics, the EU, uh, immigration and all sorts of other things. It's really influential and important and should be remembered, should be discussed. This is history. Remember history and discuss it. Enoch Powell's beliefs still divide opinions. Some of the things he said I think were quite good. He wasn't a racist, not at all. He put a division between ethnic minority. I was deeply offended and um, I, I felt like an outsider. I felt unwanted, but uh, we've come a very long way since then. <coughs> How dare I say such a horrible thing? Powell famously said all political careers end in failure, and he was sacked by Edward Heath from the shadow cabinet after the speech, never to return to frontline politics. Half a century on, the sentiments expressed by Powell continue to inform the debate around immigration. Joanne Gallagher, and now a black country Labour MP, is organising a rally on the eve of next month's 50th anniversary, promising high-profile speakers from all over the country. Well, down the line to Westminster, I asked Ian Austin if some of Enoch Powell's predictions about racial tension had, in fact, come true. I mean, look, the region's not without its challenges, of course, but community relations in general are really good in the region. The West Midlands is a place where people from all over the world, all backgrounds, all communities, have come together and worked together to improve life for all of us. And I think that's something that we should celebrate and, uh, and we should be proud of. And I think it's very important when people look back on that shameful speech. This was a speech which divided people on the basis of the colour of their skin. He wanted immigrants to return home. He abused black children. Uh, it caused great division. It even resulted in people being attacked. And what he said in the speech wasn't actually even true. And we need to point that out at a time when 
this speech is being remembered. It is a 50th anniversary. It had a huge effect. People are interested in it still today. And I want to show why it was wrong and how much better our communities have become over the last 50 years. But if he was as wrong as you say he was, why stir it up? Why not just allow history to consume him? Well, I'm not stirring it up. There is interest in this. There's been a, you know, a campaign, a suggestion there should be a blue plaque commemorating him. Uh, there is interest, clearly, in, uh, in this speech. It's a big anniversary. The media are interested in, in it anyway. And I thought the best thing to do, given that there is interest in this and there is a discussion about it, is to organise a positive rally where we can celebrate uh, our strength and our diversity and our unity in the West Midlands and we can celebrate how people from all backgrounds and all communities work together to improve life for all of us. On that question of the blue plaque to Mark, nearly a quarter of a century he spent as one of Wolverhampton's MPs, surely this, for the sake of one speech you can't reduce it down to one speech and demonise a record of public service going on for over 24 years? Well I think he's best remembered for a racist speech that divided people on the colour of their skin, that, uh, that abused black children, in which he said he wanted to send immigrants home. Look, he didn't try to bring people together, he divided communities. He didn't try to solve pe people's problems. I think he tried to whip up, you know, the most appalling sentiments and he tried to exploit prejudice uh, for political benefits. And I don't think there's anything to celebrate or commemorate about that. I want us to celebrate our, our, our unity, our diversity, our strength. I want us to celebrate the contribution from the people from all over the world have made to community life and to the economy in the West Midlands. That's what I think we should be proud of and that's what I think we should be celebrating. And Ian Austin's rally is due to take place on the 19th of April during the evening before that 50th anniversary itself. Pat McFadden as a present day Wolverhampton MP, despite the strength there of Ian Austin's feelings about this quite obviously, is it not still the case that Enoch Powell was to some extent right to the extent that immigration and some of those factors, the social cohesion issues were at play still, for example, in the Brexit vote, particularly in the black country with the Leave sentiment there? I think the speech was wrong in its predictions and cynical in its motivations. Enoch Powell knew what he was doing. He planned the speech very carefully. He tried to get maximum publicity for it. And I think to honour him now with a blue plaque would be a huge mistake. It would send a terrible signal to many of the citizens of the city. Uh, we've come along a long way since uh, those sentiments. The city has come together as a successful, multi-faith, multi-racial city. So I think this would be a deeply divisive move. And I also think it would send a terrible external signal about what Wolverhampton stands for today. So as a local MP, I'm completely opposed to this idea. Would a blue plaque really honour him, though, or is it not just a sort of recording of the fact that he served as an MP uh, and, and not to allow it to take place? It's almost like trying to airbrush Enoch Powell out of history. Well, I agree with Pat on this. I don't think we should be looking backwards. I think we should be looking forwards. And I think we have a great deal to celebrate in the West Midlands in terms of the success of the diversity in this region. Paul Upple uh, highlighted the irony in a way that Enoch Powell's old seat selected him as an East African migrant uh, as its MP. And of course, in the week when we've celebrated International Women's Day, let's remember that Eleanor Smith is the first black female MP and she now represents that seat. These are things to be celebrated and you know come 2022 Patrick when the Commonwealth Games are going to be held here in West Midlands with facilities right across the region uh, I think we need to look forward to the big opportunities and advantages we have of being so diverse. Nevertheless, mercifully, mercifully few and far between, but we have seen riots in Hansworth Lozells. We have seen a lack of social cohesion with the different ethnic communities, often living segregated lives from each other. So all is not well in the garden. And to that extent, I've come back to the suggestion that aspects of what Powell is talking about are still present in the sort of roots of our society. Well, what you describe is certainly not true of Overhampton, where we've come together very well as a city. You know, earlier this week I attended the funeral of one of the city's most favourite sons, our mayor Elias Matu. Every faith was represented. You know, every part of the city was on the streets to pay tribute to a great man. 
To do this, I think, would be backward looking, it would be divisive, it would be a terrible external signal, and I am, as I say again, completely well, would opposed you, would to Would you idea. go to this rally yourselves, really, or is it just I sort would, of... You would. I would, I'll be there. Isn't there a danger yeah. we're just sort of raking it up and, and, and actually reviving some of those divisions that... Uh, Ian Austin says we want to sort of celebrate the, well, the, the absence of what's happened. There. It's very close the 19th of April to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting when all the heads of the Commonwealth be here and I think it will be a very strong signal to send to the other Commonwealth countries that we embrace the heritage which we have, mm. that we work together, we, we grow together, but we're better Brexit off together. But is Brexit a re-emergence of anti-immigration sentiment? Isn't that also part of this? It did resurface, but I think it's important that we here in the West Midlands celebrate how uh, we, we have integrated and how success, what a heroic welcome this region has given to successive migrants who've come here for safe haven. We need to continue to do that. Final quick thought on this. Look, I, I won't decide who gets a blue plaque or not. Other people decide that. But as local MPs, I think sometimes we've got to show a bit of leadership and take a stand. Okay. And I'm completely opposed to this idea. Okay. Thank you both very much. Right. Well, uh, it's one of the great names of British industry based here in our manufacturing heartlands. GKN traces its history back.